What is going on, everybody? It is your boy, your man, Stokesy Camel 330. Back at it with another video. And today we are doing yet another Toxic Tier List Ranking. Oh, yeah. And today we're going to be doing a tier list ranking of all the NXT Heat Wave 2024 matches and the Money in the Bank 2024 matches from the and uh, rank them on this tier list from the worst to the best. But before we get sexual, beginning of the video, so guys, don't forget to subscribe if you're new to the channel because I'm on absolutely free. Now that you're on the road to a thousand subscribers, just uh, 222 away. Now and also maybe I'll lead you back and I'm recommending more people and maybe they could join that chat. <laughs> um, and uh, do feel free to comment your thoughts on NXT heat wave and money in the bank 2024 uh down below uh but with that being said guys let's get right into it yeah and before we get right into it yeah here are the categories so we have best of the best which means they are like close to really close to five star matches or five star matches they are perfect they are awesome Great means it's close to being a perfect match, but there are some spot, spots here and there that were a little bit, mm, but still a great match. Toxic goodness means it was a good match. It was a solid match. Okay means it was overall a mixed bag. To, and then we have a new category for this one, <laughs> for this uh, show, this tier list specifically. And that is the terrible decision category, where maybe like the in ring out action is solid, but the decision at the end kind of threw me for a loop and it was stupid. Then Toxic Trash means dumpster fire, like terrible match all the way around. So, um, yeah. Anyway, so we are kicking off with money and bank matches, of course, and I arranged them so chronological order for each match that happened. Well, I I didn't do that for the NXT Heat Wave matches, but whatever. All right, so first up, we have the men's money in the bank ladder match, which has L.A. Knight, yeah, J. Uso, yeet, uh, Chad Gable, Carmella Hayes, Andrade, and uh, Drew McIntyre. Kind of sounded like I said Carmella Hayes, but it, it's Carmelo Hayes. Anyways, but um, besides what happens later on in the night, I do mm, no. Ooh, it's one of these three categories. I'm gonna put it in the okay. It's right in the middle for me. I was originally gonna put it in good, but here's why. What happens later on in the show? borders on terrible decision uh because uh, who who ended up winning i mm -hmm. so okay before we get to talk about that but the my other issues with the match is i think it ended quickly i thought it would have gone a little bit longer and it actually went a little bit shorter than i expected um uh, there were a bunch of cool spots here and there. I'll give it its credit. In-ring action was decent. But the winner, Drew McIntyre, which don't get me wrong, I love Drew. Out of all the participants in it, he was the one person I did not want to win. Any one of the other guys would have if If any one of the other guys won, I would have been happy. I would have been fine. I would have gone like, okay, okay, we'll see where this leads to. And then as soon as Drew won, I already knew what they were going to plant the seeds for. And it's just, I didn't want it. And we'll talk about it after this next match. We're about to talk about it. But it's just because the in-ring action was decent. And also there are a bunch of really cool spots here. That's why it goes into the okay category. Yeah. Okay, uh, Next up, we got Sami Zayn versus Braun Breaker. And kind of the same thing what I said with Drew. Don't get me wrong. I love Sami. But this is this is terrible decision. I, look, I think Chad Gable should have dethroned Sami Zayn at Clash of the Castle. And Chad Gable ended up losing, which it is what it is. And when I saw Braun Breaker was next to challenge, okay, now's the time for Sami Zayn to drop the Intercontinental title. And, um, yeah, that didn't happen. 
Sammy D- beats Braun Breaker with one single Huluva kick. That's my biggest issue. Why? Because Braun Breaker has been built up for like a few months now on the main roster. And you have a match, pay-per-view match with Sami Zayn and Braun Breaker. And you have him lose to one Huluva kick. Yes, I know. Oh, we got to protect the finishers, you know. But come on. Braun Breaker's been a beast these last few months. Haven't you seen him, you know? And it's just, like, it was so anticlimactic. And Braun Breaker, this was the perfect opportunity to have him win. There, He's probably going to have a rematch at SummerSlam, which he'll probably win the title. But the problem is, this was in Canada, Sami Zayn's hometown. And if you want to push Braun Breaker as this big, huge monster heel that everyone should uh, be avoiding backstage and stuff for, like, on TV, then you should have had Braun win, beat Sami Zayn, win the Intercontinental Championship in front of his home crowd, make the crowd dead silent, and then complete, uh, and then continue to beat up Sami Zayn after the match, you know? That could have been a monumental moment for him in his career, but they didn't do that. Which, I think he will win the IC title at SummerSlam, hopefully, um, after this, but it's just one Huluva kick! One Huluva kick! Okay, anyways. Then we also got, ooh, back-to-back, Damien Priest versus Seth Rollins. In-ring action was good! However, I hate the money in the bank co- contract getting failed. It, there's some times where I'm not mad about it getting failed, but there's times where it gets wasted. And it getting the wasted the same exact day leaves a bad taste in my mouth. With Drew winning the briefcase earlier on in the show, and he cashes in later maybe stretch it out a little bit more and have punk cost like this is what you could have done you could have had punk versus drew at SummerSlam, where drew still mr money in the bank then uh uh gunther wins the intercontinental uh, world heavyweight championship from damian priest which is gonna happen then gunther versus i don't know who at the next pay-per-view happens and drew cashes in and you have cm punk screw him there you could have had a little bit more time to stretch out drew mcintyre as like the money in the bank briefcase holder but you do it on the same exact day however the same the seth rollins and damian priest match was good until, like, a little bit later on where the Superplex Falcon Arrow, one, two, three-ish, kind of, with the referee. Um, and there was a delay with the Drew McIntyre's music. So, I'm putting in a terrible decision. And ring action was decent, uh, but terrible decision. And CM Punk and Drew McIntyre's feud was already at a boiling point. You could have had maybe... Drew beat Punk at SummerSlam, maybe, or Punk beat Drew at SummerSlam. I feel like, more logically, Drew could beat Punk at SummerSlam, Punk could come back for revenge, and then make the... You know, it's just, it would have been way better if they kept Drew as Money in the Bank for a little bit more, but whatever. Next up, we got the Women's Money in the Bank ladder match, and... Ooh, this is tough. Um... Ooh, some, why I'm, okay, I will put it there, but it's the back of the best of the best right now, because, spoiler alert for some of the matches a little bit uh, later on we're about to talk about, but for most, some of the NXT Heat Wave matches were fantastic, they were awesome matches, so, that's why I particularly was hesitant about putting it there, but this was the best match. Of the whole entire PLE. Um, all six competitors looked great in this match. Zoe Stark especially. Which everyone was like. Not too, too excited for her to be in this match. She showed out a whole entire lot. Throughout this Money in the Bank ladder match. Uh, Naomi did good. Chelsea Green of course the hometown girl. Did really good as well. Had a sick table spot uh, on the outside. Getting pushed to the outside with from Tiffany Stratton. Tiffany Stratton winning the Women's Money in the Bank briefcase. It was either her or Chelsea. I would have been fine with e- any one of them winning. 
and Tiffany Stratton was the right choice, and I have a feeling she will successfully cash that in at SummerSlam when Nia Jax uh, uh, beat, uh, Bay- Bailey Lu- beats Nia Jax somehow, then Tiffany Stratton cashes in because Nia Jax and Tiffany are besties. Uh, and then Naomi would have won. If she would have won, I'd have been cool with it too. It just, any one of these people winning the Money in the Bank ladder match, I would have been fine with, except for, like, EO, because, don't get me wrong, I love EO, but she already won the Women's Money in the Bank contract last year, you know, she already got her crack, you know, uh, but, yeah, best of best, awesome Women's Money in the Bank ladder match, and it, it might be up there, it might be up there for one of, some of the best, uh, Women's Money in the Bank ladder matches, for sure, like, in, at least in the top three. Next up, we have the main event of the evening, which I actually was expecting Seth versus Damien to be the main event of the evening. But it is the Bloodline versus RKO and uh, Cody Rhodes, or some people are calling this actually kind of Legacy 2.0, new Legacy. Um, This match was okay. It was probably fairly predictable, to m- probably the most predictable match of the whole entire night. Um, there were some cool spots in here and there, but there were also some botches, um, like Tama Loa going for a low blow, and it, <laughs> he accidentally hits Tama Tonga in the head, then he goes for it again and actually <laughs> connects, um, and it was fairly predictable, I feel as if I don't, I don't think it should have, the referee should have been knocked down for that long, because there was a little gap after Solo hit the Simone Spike, where it took a while for the ref to get into the ring to pin Cody out, or, uh, yeah, I, you get what I'm trying to say, it took too long for Solo to get the pin against Cody Rhodes, which Solo pinning Cody Rhodes was the right decision to have that eventual SummerSlam match between S- Solo and Cody. Um, J- Jacob Fatu looked really great in here. That's the biggest positive I can think of. Um, and it, it was a fine three-on-three tag team match. I'd put it above the men's Money in the Bank ladder match just because what happens later on the show. Now, so Money in the Bank, done. Now we're moving on to NXT Heat Wave, which NXT Heat Wave... Another spoiler alert before I start ranking these matches. Might be in my top three pay-per-views of the year thus far. If you're counting WrestleMania Night 1, Night 2 as a single pay-per-view. If you're counting them as, like, separate paper, pay-per-views, then th- this is in the top five, at least. Um, And this was a phenomenal show. This might be the best NXT Premium Live event. I think I like this way more than uh, NXT Stand and Deliver, which NXT Stand and Deliver was fantastic, by the way. Um, But first up, uh, we have the first match of the night. I know it's hard to tell, but I don't know why, but tier list shortened it quite a bit uh, or made it very small. It is Wesley versus Oba Femi. Wow, this is really small. Um, and this was a great match. It, it's just a classic David Gol- versus Goliath story. I was worried. Don't get me wrong. I love Wesley, but I was worried they were going to have him beat Oba. Well, actually, I wouldn't have minded if Wesley beat Oba Femi, but I'm glad Oba Femi retained because Oba Femi is... Right now, probably having one of the best NXT North American title runs as, as of late. Um, great match. A lot of cool spots. There's <laughs> Oba Femi slapped the crap out of Wesley's chest, chest in this match in one spot where I think Wes tried to kick him or something, and then Oba Femi just slapped him, and it sounded like a gunshot. It was brutal. Um, and... Uh, yeah, all both competitors looked good in this match, and I think it's now time for Wesley to get called up to the main roster. Um, this was a great match. So, and uh, maybe Oba Femi's the next one to challenge. Oh wait, right, I forgot. Trick Williams isn't champion anymore, so heel versus heel that doesn't make sense. Uh, so you know, you know. All right, next up, I know I don't have him chronological. Fine, I'll go chronological order. Um, next up, we have the NXT Women's North American Title match between Kalani Jordan and Sol Ruka, and this was as well a great match. I was super surprised by this one. So this is kind of similar, I would say. It's not as amazing as the match is, but it's kind of like a a woman's version of Will Ospreay versus Ricochet. And it's a really great match. 
Both looked really good. This solidified as Kalani Jordan winning. This solidified that Kalani Jordan winning the NXT North American Championship, Women's North American Championship ladder match at Battleground was the right decision. Um, because her and Sol Ruka put on a great match. Uh, and yeah, they had a lot of they were trading athleticism throughout the match was re- which was really cool where they were at a stalemate uh a couple of times to, through the match had a lot of cool spots you had Kalani Jordan hitting an avalanche poison rana on Sol Ruka off the top rope following up with split leg moonsault overall it's a great match and the best NXT Women's North American title match so far. Okay, um, I forgot which order these two went. I th- No, I think the tag team match was before uh, Roxanne Perez versus Lola Vice. I'm pretty sure. Um, but this was an awesome tag team match. The build-up, I will give, I will say it wasn't the strongest, but the NXT tag team title match between Axiom and Nathan Frazier versus Chase U was awesome. Uh, there were a lot of cool spots in here. Chase U almost got the win when uh, Nathan Fraser uh, super kicked Axiom and Axiom kicked out. Uh, that was pretty cool. Uh, also, uh, Andre Chase doing a Canadian Destroyer off of Nathan Fraser to Axiom. Uh, that was really cool. Um, and this match, I was actually thinking um, Chase U was going to win, but Axiom and Nathan Fraser won, which is good for them. And I wasn't, to be honest with you, I was not liking Nathan Fraser and Axiom's tag team title run so far. But this actually this made the their title run better. I think if they keep on having matches like this, then okay, okay, you're good tag team champions. You know, they're on the right path. They're on the right path. Next up, we have Roxanne Perez versus Lola Vice for the NFC Women's Championship. And I will put this toxic goodness. I I was actually expecting Lola Vice to get the win here. I know that might be shocking for some people, but I was actually expecting her to win. Um, maybe they have a rematch next pay-per-view, possibly. That's where Lola beats Roxanne Perez. Uh, but this was a really good match. Um, Lola not giving up was a good story in there where she kicked out of Pop Rocks. Then she kicks out of a Pop Rocks on the announcer's table. So Roxanne Perez pulled out of her bag a trip, uh, triple Pop Rocks, a super finisher. And um, I was a little shocked that Roxanne Perez beat Lola Vice. But um, I'm, I'm kind of happy she beat her. Because Roxanne Perez's title run right now is fantastic. I'm, I'm loving her title run. And she's having great matches. I mean, we all saw it with Jordan Grace. We all saw it with um, uh, Natalia. She had a pretty good match against. Uh, even though I'm, I'm not a big fan of Natalia. Uh, Chelsea Green and her had a really good match. And also, uh, wait, what was the other pay-per-view? Um, I'm blanking it out. Wait, did she have another pay-per-view title defense? Uh... Oh, wait, the triple threat match uh, was really good, too. Um, so this was a good match, um, and hopefully they c- continue to follow it up with another match where Lola Vice ends up winning the NXT Women's Championship. And then finally, finally, we have the fatal four-way match for Trick Williams NXT Championship, which has Ethan Page, Havon Evans, or and um, Sean Spears. And this match was the best match of this whole entire weekend. Can you fit there please? Okay thank you. Uh, this match was awesome. This is five stars as far as I'm concerned. Hey Von Evans man. The, he proved all the doubters wrong for sure. Because this kid has a bright. Well not kid. Why am I calling him kid? I'm 16. No. I'm the kid. Sorry Hey Von if you're watching this. I'm the, I'm. You're not a kid. You're an adult. <laughs> but anyways, um, he showed out in this match and proved that he can work with the older guys on the roster that are a little bit older than him. Uh, Truk Williams did really great in here. There were a lot of cool spots. Um, Havon Evans going through the announcer's table on the outside was pretty cool. Uh, him hitting, I think, two cutters in here was awesome, too. Uh, Ethan Page and Sean Spears both looked really good in here. Um, Sean Spears did a sharpshooter in here, uh, honoring Canada, you know, and Bret Hart. Um, 
And this shocked me because I was not expecting this outcome at all. Ethan Page is your new NXT champion, which I was not expecting at all. I was fully expecting Trick Williams to retain. And maybe they have another match where possibly Ethan Page and him face each other. But nope, I was wrong. Ego's Edge himself wins the title, which I'm not mad at. And I think the reason why they put the title on Ethan Page is because they know how good he, good he is, first of all. And probably they're trying to... Most likely why they put the title on him now is because they're trying to set an example for the some of the other people in AEW that aren't happy right now and kind of want to leave, but they haven't shared it. And sh is showing them possibly... That could be you in the future if you come to work here for us, basically. Um, and, yeah, I'm very happy with the result of Ethan Page becoming NXT champion. I'm sure he's going to be a very fun NXT champion. Um, but with that being said, guys, I hope you all enjoyed this toxic tier list ranking of all the Money in the Bank 2024 matches and NXT Heat Wave 2024 matches from the worst to the best. Be sure to let me know your... Uh, list down below but with that being said guys I'll see y'all next one everybody pa 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 pa